Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video. And in this video, I want to take a moment to talk about relic weapons. How do you get them, what they are, and explain exactly how this new system works. So if you do enjoy this video and you do find it helpful, then a like would be super appreciated. And be sure to comment down below and let me know if you guys have any questions. Also, while not strictly Monster Hunter related, we are currently running a giveaway for a limited edition God of War PS4 Pro. So if you guys want a chance to win that, then click the link in the description box down below to enter. Now, to begin with, Let's start with what exactly are relic weapons. Well, essentially these are weapons that you get as drops from completing the Kulv Taroth Siege. You then appraise these weapons and what you get in return are these hybrid offerings. Part Kulv Taroth, part from another monster. So unlike all other monsters in the game, you won't go to the smithy to craft Kulv Taroth weapons. Instead, you'll be getting these relics as drops. Now, what's special about these is that they have the opportunity to take an existing weapon that you like from a particular tree and provide you with an even better version. But similarly, there are also offerings on the other end of the spectrum that are instead worse. These are the sorts of weapons that you would typically sell. An example would be this sword and shield that I have. This right here is the Barn Claw 3, a sleep sword and shield from Radaban. Meanwhile, this is the Taroth Slicer Tar, the Kul Taroth or relic variant of that weapon. And when you compare them, you can see this is indeed the better offering. Another example being the Baroth Sword and Shield, a popular choice for raw damage SNS builds given the high raw and hidden element. Meanwhile this, the Mud Gold Scimitar, is the not so good version. This is something I would likely throw away. Meanwhile this, this Taroth Slice of Mud is the better version. Higher raw, same negative affinity, but I can augment to get rid of that, and that hidden element allowing me to run with Elementalist. Sure it's missing the slot, but I can work around that. So to reiterate what I said at the beginning, Relic weapons are hybrid versions of existing weapons in the pre-existing trees that can sometimes be better and sometimes be worse. Now if you guys played Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate then you'll be familiar with the old relic system and if you didn't play that then the previous game had a very similar system. However where these two systems differ is that in Monster Hunter World there are a finite number of possibilities. This new system isn't true random generation. While there are plenty of options, the stats are fixed per weapon. So take this Rarity 8 Hunting Hall that I got, Taroth Pipe Dragon. If you get this weapon with this name, your stats will be the same as mine. The stats don't roll differently. So while there can be multiple versions within the same tree, as you saw with the Barrow Sword and Shield, the stats are fixed for the named weapons. And to that end, some of the guys over on the Monster Hunter Reddit are trying to put together a spreadsheet to document all the weapons found so far. I'll link it down below. At times the sheet is locked because it's being worked on currently, but when it's open, you'll better see what some of the people have got so far. And there are some really cool options. A few of my favorites that I've got so far are the Radaban Sword and Shield that I've already shown you and the new Baroth Sword and Shield 2. Plus, I got this Sleep Greatsword, Taroth Blaze Sleep, Decent Raw, High Sleep and Hidden, giving you options and a nice level 3 slot on top. My weapon box is a little bit of a mess right now. I need to take the time to sort through all of these relics and work out which ones are worth keeping, but those are a few that I've picked up so far. To give you some more examples, Zelda Hunter posted a couple of screenshots on Twitter of some nice drops that he got. Zelda Hunter is also an awesome Monster Hunter artist, so if you guys haven't already seen some of the stuff that he's done, I will link his Twitter down below, be sure to hit him up with a follow. But the first one he got is this Taroth Crest Thunder Rarity 8 Lance with really high thunder. So for those elemental builds, this is really nice, and keep in mind that during the first stage of the fight, Kulv Taroth is weak to thunder. And he also got this cool power file switch axe with sleep element and a nice level 3 slot. I've also heard that there's a really nice version of the Tobi Kenachi bow, great for elemental playstyles, and of course there's so much more to discover. Maybe once I've had a chance to run this quest more over the next week, if you guys would be interested, I could put together a video showing off some of the best weapons that myself and some of the people that I play with have found, so that way you guys know what to look out for. Let me know if that's something you would like to see. However, to round things out, let's cover how you get these. Assuming by now you're like, okay, these relics sound cool, I want in, what do I need to do? Well, the short answer is complete the Kulv Taroth Siege. Remember that you won't necessarily defeat the monster on the first try in a quest, but you will weaken it, and you can then go back in and fight it again. In order to complete the quest, you have to break its horns in the final area. Doing so will result in the quest ending, and you will then be able to carve the horns. Carving the horns can reward you with not only parts from the monster, but also melded weapons, which you then take back with you to get appraised at the quest handler in the gathering hall. But also, upon completing the quest, before you embark on another one, you need to claim all your rewards. These drops come in different rarities, but after you've appraised them, you can claim your weapons alongside all your other rewards. So break the horns, carve the horns, and claim your rewards, and that, my friends, is how you get the relics. If you have any more questions, by all means let me know in the comments down below, but otherwise, thank you very much for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.